I think we're live. Happy June, everybody. We're so excited to be buzzing with you today. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Jen Rubens. My lovely colleagues will introduce themselves. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel Mann. I'm Kate McManus. We have so much to celebrate this month. Um, one thing, just libraries and librarians, which we're always thrilled to celebrate every month, but June is of course Pride Month, it's Audiobook Month, it's ALA. We just have so much excitement to share with you all and we hope you share in it with us. Um, just a few housekeeping things to go over before we get started. Our hashtag is PRH Morning Buzz. So if you would like to tweet out all the books you're excited about or anything else that's related to our buzz, please shout it out or put it in the comments in this in this webinar. And then we have our key down there. So when we present our titles, you can see all of the formats that are available, including the e-galley in the orange circle. So you know if you can go ahead and request it and start listening or reading, excuse me, I'm audiobook month on the mind. <laughs> start reading right away and be the first to know about these great titles. So as I mentioned, ALA is coming up. We cannot wait. If any of you plan to be there, please shout it out in the comments. We can't wait to see you in person. We'll be in booth 2814. And we have so many amazing events happening. We're so thrilled to be looking forward to being together. And um, we have lots of great authors who will be joining us in Chicago. And we also have some buzzes, including a live morning book buzz. So be sure to register for that. That's happening on Sunday, June 25th at 1130 AM. We also have lots of other book buzzes. So if you're having fun today, you have to go to all of these amazing events. You're going to have such a good time. We cannot wait. We have our gets our PRH gets graphic buzz on Saturday. We have our, um, our PRH publishing services library book buzz on Sunday following our book buzz. Um, so, so much fun to be had, lots of other events. Look for our email in um, your, your e-boxes soon that will have lots of exciting info. And of course, there'll be a wrap up after this with all of the links so you can RSVP and be sure to join us if you will be there. All right, and here we have our book club resources. I'm sure a lot of you know of our issue page and I've explored it before, but if anybody is interested in some book club kits book, uh, or book club guides, you can go online to these links down here, tinyurl forward slash bc brochures and tinyurl.com forward slash bc kits, I-S-S-U-U. -S -S -U. You can find them all there. We are so excited to kick off our all-inclusive summer reading program this year. Uh, we're providing you fun resources to share with your patrons all summer long, including reading racks featuring the hottest books of the season, uh, summer reading sweeps you can share with your patrons, um, and our very fun checked out checklist featuring reading prompts for each of the 13 weeks of summer. And if you're following Bar Read Repeat on socials, we'll be sharing the first prompt of summer tomorrow. So be sure to sit back, relax, and we invite you to check out with us all summer long. And if you or your patrons are having a hard time deciding which summer blockbuster to start, you can certainly browse our latest summer reading sampler to get a taste for your next read. Um, we have a ton of samplers for you to browse, as I'm sure you've seen. You can download them for free, so definitely check out the links below to get started, or you can visit our page on issue.com. And as Jen said, all of these links will be in the wrap up so you don't have to work really fast to write them down. <laughs> Okay, pop quiz, everybody. So normally I have the hat, but you know, it's audiobook month. We're making it audiobook themed. Audiobooks are not cheating, and I don't even think it's possible to cheat on this quiz. So no worries there. But we want all of you to give your answers in the chat so we can all share in our pop quiz answers. So here we go. Who would you choose to narrate your life story? Anyone want to share? <laughs> I can kick it off. Um, do. So I am a very newly devoted fan of Brittany Presley. Um, I loved her narration for Beware the Woman, which is the latest super creepy thriller from Megan Abbott. And I just finished listening to her in Such Pretty Flowers by K.L. Sarah, which is a Southern Gothic thriller set in Savannah, Georgia. So yeah, I'm going with Brittany Presley. She's amazing. Nice. 
Uh, when I was thinking about this question, I was thinking about all, you know, the great audiobook narrators we know, but for some reason in my head, I just kept coming back to uh, Green Lights, Matthew McConaughey's audiobook. <laughs> I was like, if anybody's going to tell my story, I want it to be Matthew McConaughey. So that's who I would have narrate my life story right now. All right. Oh my gosh. I love that. Well, now I feel a little bit vain. I was going to say, I would want to narrate my own life story. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I have my equipment. I, I, I want the job. <laughs> but I don't know if anyone, I don't see any chat. I don't know if anyone has access to the chat in the in the um, webinar. I'm just not seeing it. But feel free to write in your answers if you want to join in our audiobook pop quiz. We would love to see who you would want to narrate your life story. And now on to, in, in appropriate fashion, celebrity memoirs. Awesome. So while I wouldn't choose to have all narrate my life story, I am going to kick us off with his celebrity memoir. Um, so first up, we have Be Useful, Seven Tools for Life by Arnold Schwarzenegger. He is the world's greatest bodybuilder, the world's highest paid movie star, the leader of the world's sixth largest economy. And the fact that these are the same person sounds like the setup to a joke, but this is no joke. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger, and this did not happen by accident. Arnold's stratospheric success happened as part of a process. As the result of clear vision, big thinking, hard work, resilient problem solving, and a commitment to giving back. All of it guided by the one lesson Arnold's father hammered into him above all. Be useful. As Arnold conquered every realm he entered, he kept his father's edge close to his heart. Written with his uniquely earnest, blunt, powerful voice, Be Useful takes readers on an inspirational tour through Arnold's toolkit for a meaningful life. He shows us how to put those tools to work in service of whatever fulfilling future we can dream of for ourselves. He brings his insights to vivid life with compelling personal stories, life-changing successes and life-threatening failures alike. Some of them famous, some of them told for the first time ever. This book is perfect for fans of Green Lights, 12 Rules for Life, and Atomic Habits. And there's a new Netflix documentary, I believe it goes on today about Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm not gonna attempt. Um, but I also will add in honor of audiobook month that he will be reading the audiobook. So can you imagine, I mean, talk about, he could not select anyone else but himself to read his life story, of course, or any of his useful tools for life. Um, it's a little hot in here. I'm just gonna get ready to present my oh, Dolly my Parton gosh. title. You know, it's so tough. There's so much pressure, you know, Doing a book called Dolly Parton behind the seams. I mean, my life in, in rhinestones. I don't have rhinestones. So this is my Wednesday morning in sequence. My book will be out later today. <laughs> Amazing. But um, I mean, we had we had to, you know, give it up for Dolly Parton. This is a beautiful celebration of Dolly Parton's iconic sense of style. I can't even attempt, but here I go. Um, with entertaining personal stories and 450 full color photographs, including exclusive images from her private costume archive. And of course, we all know and love Dolly. She's one of the most honored and revered female singer songwriters of all time. And as you librarians may know, she also calls herself the book lady. And that's because to date, Parton has donated over 200 million books to children around the world with her imagination library. And just yesterday, California announced its expansion of the program. So in addition to being this incredible fashion icon and singer, she's just done so much good in the world of reading and we're so grateful. And of course she has 11 Grammy awards, 51 nominations. And in this incredible book, Behind the Seams, My Life in Rhinestones, she, the global superstar that she is for the first time, tells the full story behind her lifelong passion for fashion, including how she developed her own distinct, distinctly Dolly style, which has defied convention and endeared her to fans around the world. So this has behind the scenes stories from her life and career. It has the largest reveal of her private costume archive, gorgeously photographed, 
Um, you know, you can expect to see the sky high heels and the wigs and the makeup. And it's just going to be such an incredible book filled with candor and humor, lots of rhinestones. And it's really a shining tribute to one of the most beloved musicians in history. And so it's a must for your shelves. It will literally shine on your shelves if you can't tell in the in the picture there. And the audiobook will also be an incredibly immersive listening experience. And it's really a companion piece to this book because obviously you can't recreate a book like this in audio. So it's going to be in, very special in its own right. You'll hear Dolly's voice. It will feature interviews, including clips of people who have dressed her over the years, as well as music. So really the audio and the book are just going to be such, such incredible um, reads and listens for Dolly fans everywhere. And also I had to add here that the American Library Association is set to confer an honorary lifetime membership upon award-winning singer, songwriter, actress, businesswoman, and philanthropist Dolly Parton for her longstanding support and commitment to inspiring a love of books and reading. So look forward to that happening as well this month. All right, and then I have Great Falls, Montana by Reggie Watts, a comedian, musician, and late, late show with James Corden, band leader Reggie Watts, writes of a memoirs of his growing up, son of a Black serviceman, and French white mother in Great Falls, Montana, a place that fostered his identity and creative expression, a place that he needed to leave and ultimately to return to. Great Falls, Montana, like Reggie, is weird. He grew up there as the only biracial kid in town, slipping between orchestra geeks and football jocks, and finding eventually finding a tribe of fellow misfits with an affinity for trouble. Reggie takes us through his entire growing up story in this book, uh, hitting on the culture shock he experienced after moving from uh, Europe, where his mother is from, to Montana, where he was called racial slurs by his neighbors, but was still never, you know, quote unquote, black enough for his father's black side of the family. Um, he tells stories of how he clashed with both his parents, how this place shaped his growing up. Um, and yeah, this is going to be great for fans of The Late Late Show. I would tune in occasionally and I always loved seeing Reggie behind the bandstand. He, I thought he was so funny. Um, and I think this book is definitely going to follow suit. It has a more experimental uh, tone than most other celebrity memoirs. So this is going to be a great read for those interested in music and comedy and in um, growing up black in a small town. And just to add in, I think our our, oh, I was just going to say, unfortunately, I think our chat wasn't working, even though we were asking you for participation, but our Q&A was just turned on. So if you want to communicate with us that way, you can give that a try and see how we do. <laughs> Nothing like live, live book buzzing here, but thanks for being here, everyone. There's no movie magic here. All right. And then next up, I have Lucky Me by Rich, uh, by Rich Paul. Uh, Lucky Me is a memoir of will, success, and the luck we make. It comes from Rich Paul, the founder and CEO of Clutch Sports Group, which is one of the in uh, which he is one of the most influential figures in the multi-billion dollar sports industry. A lot of people know Rich Paul's story. He was a 21-year-old kid from Cleveland who made his living selling sports jerseys out of the back of his car until one day he meets bas new basketball phenom LeBron James in the airport. And the two of them forge a business partnership that will basically reinvent the business of sports and sports mer merchandising. Um, this Lucky Me is a riveting journey of young Rich narrated by the voice of Rich today. Um, he looks back with wit and insight. He draws out lessons that he learned at every age about business, people, and the values that led him to his great success. It's an inspiring story of luck and all the luck that's around us, as long as we know where to look. Jay-Z actually described Rich Paul's background as one of the greatest stories of growing up in America's ghettos and overcoming adversity. So this is gonna be a really great inspirational read, especially for those who love sports novels, basketball, and everything like that. Very cool. Um, I have another memoir from a music icon to share with you. Um, so next up, we have Sonic Life, a memoir by Thurston Moore. From the founding member of Sonic Youth, this is a passionate memoir tracing the author's life and art from his teen years as a music obsessive in small town Connecticut to the formation of his legendary rock group 
to 30 years of creation, experimentation, and wonder. Thurston Moore moved to Manhattan's East Village in 1978 with a yearning for music. He wanted to be immersed in downtown New York's sights and sounds, the feral energy of its nightclubs, the angular roar of its bands, and the magnetic personalities within its orbit. But more than anything, he wanted to make music, to create indelible sounds that would move, provoke, and inspire. His dream came to life in 1981 with the formation of Sonic Youth a band more co-founded with Kim Gordon and Lee Ronaldo. Sonic Youth became a fixture in New York's burgeoning new no-wave scene, an avant-garde collision of art and sound, poetry, and punk. The band would evolve from critical darlings to commercial heavyweights, headlining festivals around the globe while helping introduce listeners to such artists as Nirvana, Hole, and Pavement, and playing alongside such icons as Neil Young and Iggy Pop. Through it all, Moore maintained an unwavering love of music, the new, the unheralded, the challenging, and the irresistible. In the spirit of just kids, Sonic Life offers a window into the trajectory of a celebrated artist and a tribute to an era of explosive creativity. This is a story for anyone who has ever felt touched by sound, who knows the way the right song at the right moment can change the course of a life. So this is perfect for Sonic Youth's devoted fan base and also of readers of books by David Grohl and Patti Smith. And then moving on to another iconic singer, the iconic singer, right? Hello, gorgeous. It's good I'm doing this from Brooklyn, right? Um, <laughs> librarians, can you hear me? Um, this is the long awaited, did anyone get that Yenzel reference? Come on. <laughs> Sounds like faces. <laughs> the long awaited memoir by the superstar of stage, screen, recordings, and television. I mean, none other than Barbara Streisand. Soft ass guys, make sure. <laughs> Pronounced like sand. Um, oh my gosh, my my computer froze here with my my notes. Anyway, um, she is by any account a living legend, of course. She's a woman with a career spanning six decades, has excelled in every area of entertainment. She's among the handful of EGOT winners, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. And of course, has one of the greatest and most recognizable voices in music. Um, she's been nominated for a Grammy 46 times. With Yentl, she became the first woman to write, produce, direct, and star in a major motion picture. We could just spend this entire hour going over her accolades, right? So this book is like Barbara herself, frank, funny, opinionated, and charming. She's gonna recount her early struggles to become an actress. She famously said that she only became a singer because she was trying to be an actress. And um, you know, she wanted to be the best at everything. And she knew that she had a pretty good voice. Um, so we just cannot wait um, to, to read this, to listen to this. It will be narrated by Barbara herself. And I think it's safe to say this year, no entertainer's memoir has been more anticipated than Barbara Streisand's. And this is going to be the definitive account. And the book will contain many never before seen photographs from her personal collection. So this is just gonna be a must read or must listen for fans everywhere. All right, next up we have Read Proud, Listen Proud. Um, this is our pride category. And first up, we have Countries of Origin by Javier Fuentes. Countries of Origin stories the tumultuous, passionate love affair between two young men from vastly different wor worlds during one extraordinary summer in Spain in what is ultimately a meditation on identity, class, belonging, and desire. This is Javier Fuentes' debut, no debut novel, and it is absolutely bound to impress. Countries of Origin follows Demetrio, a 24-year-old pastry chef who has just been offered an incredible opportunity in New York that he cannot take because of his undocumented immigrant status. And Jacob, a wealthy and connected NYU student, as they cross paths over one summer in Spain. This is going to be perfect for fans of Call Me By Your Name and other summer European-inspired uh, romances. Um, Andrew Sean Greer, Pulitzer Prize-winning author of Less Is Lost, uh, said that country's origin is filled, full of so many pleasures, literary, color, culinary, and amorous, that one almost wants to save it for a special day. This is bound to be an incredible book. I'm actually really looking forward to reading this one myself as a fan of Call Me By Your Name. Um, 
countries of origin is said to be powerfully sensual and moving Fuentes takes you on a journey that will immerse you in the um, intense and heartbreaking emotions of conflict love and loss so this one is bound to be great and then on a slightly lighter note i have uh xoxo cody by cody rigsby uh if anybody on is your peloton, peloton come on, come on. <laughs> I couldn't get my bike in in time, so I'm sorry I'm doing this stationary. Um, maybe I'll do some no shots. Of no bike, pun intended. No, pun intended, yeah. Stationary. <laughs> but this is my Peloton instructor, Cody Rigsby. Um, he is absolutely beloved in that regard. He was a Dancing with the Stars finalist. He's kind of a pop culture phenom. Um, and XOXO Cody uh, chronicles his journey from small town North Carolina to New York City stardom and an empowering story that reveals his secret to success not taking yourself or life too seriously this uh book is full of raw raw and inspiring stories about learning how to handle the scary stuff interspersed with Q and A's and Cody's definitive rankings of everything from his favorite snacks to the most to the scariest Mario Kart characters um it's bound to be silly it is bold it is fun and the, at the core of it there's a heartfelt reminder that sometimes laughing at yourself is the best medicine and remembering that it's not that deep this is again great for fitness enthusiasts dancing with the stars fans or general pop culture fanatics readers of john van, jonathan van ness's over the top or stassi schroeder's next level basic are going to love this one I'm really excited, excited for this one <laughs> All right, so I originally put on this outfit for Dolly, but I feel like it's just serving me so well today. I mean, Barbara and now Friends of Dorothy. I'm going to put on my rainbow glasses, guys. Happy Pride Month. I think the sequins work here, too, don't we think? And I'm going to present this amazing book called Friends of Dorothy. So what makes a gay icon? Free, uninhibited expression and open mind, creativity and bravery. This is the ultimate celebration of LGBTQIA plus icons profiling 40 artists, entertainers, writers, and activists who have inspired the queer community with their style, openness, and diversity. So I can only try my best here, but you've got to see this book for these incredible icons. This is a collection of Instagram worthy illustrated biographies. It takes you on a tour through LGBTQIA history from the 20th century through today, featuring Judy Garland, RuPaul, Lady Gaga, and many more. So this is just gonna be such a beautiful book for your shelves. It welcomes readers into a flamboyant world populated by larger than life figures who inspired so many people over the decades. Perhaps they created controversies, perhaps they challenged conventions, and sometimes put their own lives on the line in order for new generations to live in a more equal and accepting world. So we all need books like this. There are spectacular color portraits by artist Alejandro Moglio Diaz, and it's just such a dramatic visual style, and it perfectly captures the flair and panache of these figures. So we're so excited to um, have this brought to your libraries by an expert author named Anthony Uzarowski, and um, he's already written numerous articles about classic Hollywood, and he's the perfect author and paired with the perfect illustrator. This is just a beautiful pick, and we're so thrilled to bring it to you today in honor of Pride. And then, oh, I have the next one too. Oh, and thanks for everyone saying happy Pride, happy Pride. And then next up on this list, we have Iris Kelly doesn't date. So a fake relationship after a horrible one night stand is anything but an act in this witty and heartfelt new romantic comedy by Ashley, Ashley Herring Blake. So of course we all in this crowd know Ashley Herring, Herring Blake. Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail was the number one library reads pick in November, 2022. And Delilah Green Doesn't Care was a February 2022 library reads pick and an audio. It was the Audi Award winner for best romance. So we already know we cannot go wrong with Iris Kelly Doesn't Date. Sign me up to date this book. Um, everyone around Iris Kelly is in love. Her best friends are all coupled up, her siblings of partners that are perfect for them and her parents are still blissfully married and she's happy for all of them. And she doesn't want any of that dating love romance she'll stick to her commitment free hookups thanks very much except no one in her life will just let her be everyone wants to see her settle down but she holds firmly to her no dating rule there's only one problem iris is a romance author facing an imminent deadline for her second book and she's completely out of ideas 
So I love the tie in here of, of an author with this very funny problem. And, you know, in the book, she's perfectly happy to ignore her problems. And she goes into a bar and she meets a sexy stranger named Stefania and has a great night of dancing and making out. And it turns into the worst one night stand she's ever had in her life. And so to get her mind off everything, she tries out for the lead role in a local play, a queer retelling of Much Ado About Nothing. And of course, she comes face to face with Stefania whose real name turns out to be Stevie. And so <laughs> lots of, of, uh, of fun drama, you know, takes place. She's desperate to save face in front of her friends and um, they make an arrangement um, to agree that they play the part of a happy couple and then the lines start to blur. So this is gonna be such a fun read, such a fun listen. It's a great addition to our list of queer romances and romances for anyone who loves romances. And um, we just can't wait for you to get a read on this one. Very exciting, yay. All right, so next up we have Something About Her by Clementine Taylor. Um, this is a heartfelt and delicately crafted debut novel about two young women who become entangled in one another and embark on a surprising journey of self-discovery and modern love. Aisling and Maya's connection is unexpected. Maya has recently returned to the University, the University of Edinburgh for her second year, confident in her place there and in her first proper relationship with her childhood best friend, Ethan. Finally, she is one of them, those happy couples, self-satisfied in the knowledge that they are one half of something solid. Aisling is a first year student from Ireland, ready to leave her controlling family behind but despite the distance, she still feels claustrophobic. She still feels watched. Reeling from her breakup with her ex-girlfriend, she struggles to make friends and finds herself isolated. That is, until Aisling joins the Poetry Society, and that's where she meets Maya, and then everything changes. Moving between Ireland, Scotland, and London, something about her is a story about the fragility and transformative power of first love. With vivid insight and tenderness, it exposes the fear, hope, and longing that can consume us, particularly when there's so much you still don't know about love, about life, and about yourself. This is a dynamic story of love and of coming of age, unfolding over the course of a single academic year. Um, something about her is a fresh look at the coming of age narrative and perfect for fans of Sally Rooney and Nina LaCour. All right, and I will also round out the category with Mother Nature, a 5,000 mile journey to discover if a mother and a son can survive their differences by Jediah Jenkins, the New York Times bestselling author of To Shake the Sleeping Self. His mother walked across America in the 70s. Her past fascinates him. Her faith confounds him. They embark on a 5,000 mile journey to discover how families can stay together when beliefs are pulling them apart. When his mother, Barbara, turned 70, Jedediah Jenkins was reminded of a sobering truth. Our parents won't live forever. For years, he and Barbara had talked about taking a trip together, just the two of them. They disagreed about politics, about God, about the, pro the project of society, disagreements that hurt. But they love thrift stores, they love eating at diners, they love true crime and they love each other. He wanted to step into Barbara's world and get to know her in a way that occasional visit, visits hadn't allowed. They landed on an idea, retrace the thousands of miles Barbara trekked with Jedi's father, travel writer Peter Jenkins, as part of the Walk Across America book trilogy that became a sensation in the 1970s. Beginning in New Orleans, they set off for the Oregon coast, listening to podcasts about outlaws and cult leaders, the only media they could agree on while reliving the journey that changed Barbara's life. Jenkins discovers who she was as a 30-year-old writer walking across America and who she is now as a parent who loves her son, yet holds on to a version of faith that sees his sexuality as sin. Along the way, he peels back the layers of questions millions are asking today. How do we stay in, relation, in a relationship when it hurts? When do boundaries turn into separation? When do we stand up for ourselves and when do we let it go? Tender, smart, and profound, Mother Nature is a story of a remarkable mother-son bond and a moving meditation on the complexities of love. This is perfect for readers of Dolly Parton and other millennial authors who are writing incisively about contemporary life.
It's that time again. So thank you to everyone for putting up with our technical difficulties and writing in the Q&A. We're loving the responses to who would you have narrate your your life story from Maggie Smith to Tina Fey to Kelsey Ballerini, Lorelai King, Kate Mulgrew. We're going to gather these fabulous responses and we'll send out some in the wrap up so you can see if you can't in the Q&A what everyone had to say. But um, Thanks for indulging us and participating in Audiobook Month Pop Quiz. So next up, what audiobook first hooked you? Okay, um, can I, I'll start, I'll start this one because I really love this question. Um, forever ago, I was doing an internship at Penguin House um, and I was living in New York City for the very first time. And coincidentally, I was interning at the audio department here at PRH. I and so I, well. <laughs> I go back um, and I was getting really into audiobooks at that time. So I could immerse myself a little bit. And I started listening to Andrew Rannells' first memoir, um, which I end up completely falling in love with because it was all about his journey from a small town, moving to New York City for the first time, living in New York City for the first time as a young man and as a student. Um, I remember being like totally enamored with Andrew Reynolds' voice and falling even more in love with him than I had previously. Um, so that is definitely the first, that's my first audiobook that ever fully hooked me and brought me face first into the world of audio. I love it. And such a good, it's a pride pick. The Tony Awards are this weekend. You're so on theme, Rachel. I love it. <laughs> I had, when I was a kid, um, something called a press and play. I don't know if anyone remembers this. It was like a big plastic box with colorful buttons and you could store books inside of it. And so as a kid, I feel like it helped me learn to read as well. I had books that I stored almost like you know, like a like a music stand, but you would take a book and and put it on top. And I remember reading all these kids' books that way. Or I would get those plastic bags from the library. I'm aging myself now that had cassette tapes in it with the book together. Um, so it's hard for me to even remember exactly what the book might have been. I mean, I remember so many. I I remember reading Chicken Soup and Rice with the Carol King song um, that I would listen to and, and read along with. But there were so many great ones and probably a lot of Sesame Street ones. I think the present play had like a Sesame Street theme. But I have so many fond memories of that. And then also then in college, listening to Shakespeare um, plays on audio was a big thing for me because I was studying theater and that was such a wonderful way to to incorporate my already love of audiobooks with what I was studying. And, and I remember going to the library and feeling like that was my secret section when I would go check that stuff out. Yeah, I mine is um, for the longest time, I was kind of an intermittent audiobook listener. I was never like super gung ho about it or like re really excited. But recently, I think probably about a year ago now, I listened to my year of rest and relaxation on audio oh, and yeah. it was so fun. I had just the best time. I have such vivid memories of me like having just moved to New York and sitting on the bus and listening to this book and it totally changed my perspective on audiobooks and now I am the biggest audiobook fan ever. It was great. amazing. Read, Read by Julie Whalen, right? Yes, Julie Whalen, who was my second choice behind Matthew McConaughey for who should uh, <laughs> I can see how those would, you know, be a tough competition. I'm, so. I'm sure she'd be flattered by that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to read some of these great answers before we move on to the next category. The Roanoke Girls, Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, We Were Liars. That is a great one. Hunger Games trilogy, World War Z. Wow, that is a very cool one. If you guys have not listened to that, full cast, so immersive, such a special, detailed audiobook recording, just such a unique experience. Um, well, thanks for sharing your answers. Oh, so many more. We're going to we're going to have to share more of these afterwards because you guys are so great at participating. We love you. The Devil in the White City. Oh my goodness. Okay, on to right retelling. All right. First up, we have Thief Liar Lady by D.L. Soria. And this retelling poses the question, what if Cinderella knew what she was doing all along? In this version, Cinderella did not sit idly by and wait for the prince and withstand abuse from her stepmother and her step-siblings. Rather, her and her two stepsisters trained for the goal of finding a prince. She doesn't get this incredible stroke of luck. She knows what she's doing, and she's able to manipulate men and the people around her along the way to get her goal, which is to become a princess, to gain this power. But as it always goes, 
the wrong prince steps in the way and begins to distract Cinderella. He is not the one she is gunning for. He's not the right prince, but she can't help her feelings for him. And she finds herself at risk of losing control of the delicate balance of the situation she has worked so incredibly hard to create. Uh, D.L. Soria has totally reconce reconceptualized Cinderella um, and created a, uh, a woman who has so much agency and life and verve for a modern day retelling of this classic story. Um, people who have read D.L. Soria's uh, critically acclaimed YA novels are going to love this one. Um, and it actually has already gotten a School Library Journal Star review. Um, and Kirkus has called it thrilling. So I'm also thrilled for this one. And I think you all should be too. Right. So next up, we have Fit for the Gods, Greek Mythology Reimagined, um, featuring stories by a best-selling cross-genre assortment of some of the most exciting writers working today. This is an anthology of gender-bent, queered, race-bent, and inclusive retellings from the enchanting and an eternally popular world of Greek myth. Zeus, Athena, Apollo, Aphrodite and other denizens of Mount Olympus feel almost as present and larger than life today as they did when they were worshipped as gods. Humanity has been telling and retelling stories about the characters from Greek and Roman myth for centuries. From Xena warrior princess to Percy Jackson to the Song of Achilles, this obsession has never waned. Yet, Fit for the Gods shows how these stories will still have a power of memory that would impress Ovid. Here, you'll find Atalanta's wild hunt reimagined as a daring space battle, a sex swap take on Theseus and the Minotaur, a story that explores the character of Tiresias with a complex, fascinating modern understanding of gender, a chilling feminist takedown of Apollo from Daphne's POV, and the entire Greek pantheon reimagined as dangerously clever, bored AIs. Brave, bold, and groundbreaking, the stories in Fit for the Gods will be like ambrosia for those craving fresh interpretations of their favorite myths and give longtime fans a chance to finally see themselves in these beloved legends. This is perfect for fans of Madeline Miller and Rick Riordan um, and lovers of Greek myths and all the epic storytelling, tragedy, and high romances they contain. And then next up, obviously, this is for fans of Romeo and Juliet, as well as people who loved The Time Traveler's Wife, Outlander, perhaps you love The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. We're so thrilled to share The Hundred Loves of Juliet by Evelyn Skye with you. This is about a woman fleeing her disastrous marriage, and she discovers that she is part of a legendary love story that spans lives, years and continents in this modern day reimagining of Romeo and Juliet. And I will say first up, if you have not seen, um, we had a wonderful spring book and author festival just um, how, what a few weeks ago, last month, the time is flying, but oh we're going to share the link to that in the wrap up because Evelyn had such interesting things to say. She talks about editing this book, about the ending and how she was talking to her editor about how it would change, um, how she wrote out her timelines to do such a complicated book. And also you might really appreciate that she talks about her love for librarians and that her mother-in-law is Barbara Stripling, the former ALA president who you may know. So she's got lots of, of love for libraries, lots of fascinating things to say about being an author and also talks about the backstory to this, which comes from a very difficult time in her life when her husband was diagnosed with a disease and he needed a lung transplant and she's been very open about dealing with the pain of loving someone who's sick and the kinds of questions that opened up for her so in this book that she ended up writing it's 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 about a woman who when she was young she dreamed of this perfect man and she filled these notebooks with stories about him and about love in its purest form and then after this divorce she has to let go of all these daydreams and she's moved to a small town in alaska and she's ready to write her novel so it also has that great writer tie-in that i love and she's going to build a life without romance and then of course fate uh, has other plans as Shakespearean plays do. Um, and she meets a handsome man who is her invented hero in the flesh, down to 
all of the details. So how can a man she's created for her stories possibly exist in the real world? So this is just such a fun, moving read that, as I mentioned, takes you through time and all of these locations. And um, you really get to, to meet all these different versions of Juliet, including a version where she is a librarian. So this is just such a fun, wonderful, beautiful romance and, and sci-fi fantasy wrapped up into one and this amazing retelling of Romeo and Juliet. And we think you're just gonna love it. And we'll send that video out so you can hear the author talk about it herself. Okay, so next up we have Jezebel, a novel by Megan Barnard, with a bold voice reminiscent of Madeline Miller's Circe, a stunning reimagining of the story of a fierce princess and her infamous legacy. Jezebel was born into the world howling. She intends to leave it the same way. When Jezebel learns she can't be a king like her father simply because she's a girl, she vows never to become someone's decorative wife, nameless and lost to history. At 15, she's married off despite her protests to a prince of Israel. There, she does what she must do to gain power and remake the dry land and remake the dry and distant kingdom in the image of her beloved, prosperous seaside homeland, beginning by building temples to the gods um, where she grew up worshiping. As her initiatives usher in an era of prosperity for Israel, her new subjects love her and her name rings throughout the land. Then Elijah, the prophet of Yahweh and her former lover begins to speak out against her. Bitter at having been abandoned by Jezebel, he lashes out, calling her a slut, harlot, a witch, and the people revering their prophet's message turn on her. As ancient powers and faiths are pitted against each other, bloodshed descends on Israel and Jezebel faces the fall of her legacy. Determined, despite the odds to make Israel a great nation, she must decide how far she's going to go to protect her family, her throne, and her name. A stunning revision of a notorious queen story, Jezebel is a thrilling lyrical debut about a fierce woman who refuses to be forgotten. Um, this has excellent book club and monthly pick potential for all of you running book clubs out there, and is great for fans of Cersei, as well as She Who Became the Sun. So can anyone guess what Kiss the Girl might be a retelling of? I don't know how many of you went to a movie theater recently to see the new Little Mermaid, but I've been reading lots of comments from fellow parents I know talking about how they took their kids and were just sobbing in the theater, reminiscing about what it was like in their childhood to watch Little Mermaid for the first time. Um, Uh-oh, did I see it? I think I froze. Minor technical difficulties. <laughs> Thanks for being patient, everyone. This is live, so um, fun things always happen. Okay. Can you still a little, still looks like you might be frozen, Jen. Do we want to skip ahead to mine and Jen, we can circle back to yours. Okay, yeah, go ahead and do that. Um, let's go on to The Kingdom of Sweets. This is a retelling of The Nutcracker, um, obviously a classic Christmas story or holiday story by Erica Johansson. Light and dark, this is the birthright placed upon Natasha and Clara by their godfather, the mysterious sorcerer Drosselmeyer. Clara, the favorite, grows into beauty and ease, while Natasha is cursed to live in her sister's shadow. But Natasha gets her chance at revenge, revenge one fa fateful Christmas Eve when Drosselmeyer brings the Nutcracker, an enchanted present that offers entry into a deceptively beautiful world, the Kingdom of Sweets. In this land of snow and sugar, Natasha is presented with a power far greater than Drosselmeyer, the Sugar Plum, plum Fairy, who is also full of gifts and dreadful bargains. As Natasha uncovers the dark destiny laid before her birth, she must reckon with forces both earthly and magical and decide to which world she truly belongs. This is a standalone novel by the best-selling author of the Queen of Tearling series, Erica Johansson, as I said before. Um, it does come out November 28th, so it's perfectly in line with Nutcracker season and the holiday season. 
and this is bound to be any great for anybody in your life who likes these kind of darker fantasy novels and perhaps people in your life who are very interested in the nutcracker Oh, like, so exciting. Kate, did you ever watch Barbie and the Nutcracker growing up? Obviously. Love that is it. a classic. Oh, amazing. So good. Okay. Uh-oh. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. You can hear me now. You can hear me. Okay. I don't know if my video is working. Um, I'm so sorry. We're having crazy days in New York City, as some of you may know, and it might be affecting my my Wi-Fi. But um, oh there, I think I'm back. Am I back? I see you. Okay, great. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thanks for bearing with us. What a day. Um, so I'm gonna go back to kiss the girl um, because it deserves a moment. Um, it is uh, obviously a retelling as we talked about of the little mermaid. So it's a modern tale of unexpectedly falling in love, finding your voice. And it's a highly anticipated third installment in the acclaimed and best-selling Meant to Be collection. So Ariel Del Mar is one of the most famous singers in the world. She and her seven, and they've been a pop culture phenomenon since they were kids. And on stage, she wears an iconic red wig, sequined costumes. Oh my gosh, I'm in theme again, even though you can't see me wearing my sequins. <laughs> And she's staring out at a sea of fans where she shines. And anyone would think that she's the girl who has every but lately she wants more. Um, so she's wrapping up their farewell well tour and she can't wait to spend the summer living a normal life, part of a world she's only ever seen from the outside. But with her father, the head of Atlantica Records, um, he has other plans to begin her breakout solo career immediately, starting with a splashy announcement on a morning talk show. So the night before her and her sisters, they sneak out of their Manhattan penthouse for a night of fun at a rock concert. And then she crosses paths with Eric Rays, a dreamy lead singer of an up and coming band. And unaware of her true identity, he spontaneously invites her on the road for the summer. And for the first time in her life, Ariel disobeys her father and goes with him. So this has such millennial appeal. It's the perfect blend of modern and nostalgic that readers in their teens and their twenties and their thirties and beyond, I promise you, will devour and pass on to their friends. And of course it fits right in with this amazing mermaid moment that we are having. Okay, so we're gonna take a trip to the darker side of things and talk about some murder mysteries. Uh, and I'll kick us off with The Stolen Coast, a novel by Dwyer Murphy. Adrift in a sleepy coastal Massachusetts town, a man who buries fugitives by day gets twisted up in a plot to pill for diamonds in this Casablanca-infused heist novel. Now, Jack might be a polished, Harvard-educated lawyer on paper, but everyone in the picturesque village of Onset, Massachusetts knows his real job, moving people on the run from powerful enemies. The family business, co-managed with his father, a retired spy, is smooth sailing as they fill up Onset's holiday homes during the town's long, drowsy off-season and help clients shed their identities in preparation for fresh starts. But when Elena, Jack's former flame, a dedicated hustler who's no stranger to the fugitive life, makes an unexpected return to town, her arrival upends Jack's routine existence. Elena, after all, doesn't go anywhere without a scheme in mind, and it isn't long before Jack finds himself enmeshed in her latest project, intercepting millions of dollars worth of raw diamonds before they're shipped overseas. If using a fast-paced plot with sharp wit and stylish prose, Crime Reads editor, editor-in-chief Dwyer Murphy, serves up an irresistible page turner as full of heart as it is of drama. Um, like I said, this is super fast-paced, and it's great for fans of tightly plotted heist novels like Colson Whitehead's Harlem Shuffle, and for fans of noir fiction and film. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Because I think my camera keeps cutting out. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. It's It fits in with the mystery theme. Where did she go? I don't know. But I'm going to present Kala, a novel by Colin Walsh. 
This is one of the most anticipated debut books of the year. It's a gripping literary page turner from a rising Irish talent in which former friends estranged for 20 years reckon with the terrifying events of the summer that changed their lives. So if you have been a fan like I was of Mayor of East Town and Bad Sisters, how good was that show, you guys? I loved it. Um, this makes me especially excited for this novel, which has already gotten a starred review from Kirkus, who describes it as a gritty heartbreaker of a thriller, part heartfelt coming of age tale, part brutal Irish noir. This is a spectacular read for Donna Tart and Tana French fans. Did you hear that, Rachel? Donna Tart fan. <laughs> I did. I'm right here. I'm listening. So in a seaside town on Ireland's west coast, three old friends are thrown together for the first time in years. They were part of an original group of six inseparable teenagers in the summer of 2003. And um, soon after that summer's peak, one of the group, Kala, disappeared without a trace. And so now it's 15 years later and one of the group named Helen has reluctantly returned to Ireland for her father's wedding. And it brings this whole group back together. But human remains have been discovered in the woods. Two more girls have gone missing. And as past and present begin to collide, the estranged friends are forced to confront their own complicity in the events that led to Kala's disappearance. So um, this author's short stories have already won many awards. Um, TV rights have already been um, optioned, and it's just the perfect contemporary crime noir, as I mentioned, for fans of Mare of Easttown, Bad Sisters. It's small town secrets with an unsolved murder mystery at its heart, and it's an international debut and a must, we think, for murder mystery fans and book clubs everywhere. Amazing. Well, those we thought we knew actually builds on the small town secrets aspect, but brings it back home to the United States. This is from award winning author David Joy, and it's about a small North Carolina community and the evil that seems to unfurl from its center. Uh, we follow to Toya Gardner, a young black artist from Atlanta, who's returned home to North Carolina in the mountains to trace her family history and to complete her graduate thesis. But when she encounters a still standing Confederate monument in the heart of town, she sets her sights on something bigger. Meanwhile, local local deputies in this North Carolina town find a man sleeping in the back of a station wagon and believe him to be nothing more than like some random drifter, kind of a nobody. However, with a search of the car, they find a notebook that reveals him to be a high ranking member of the Ku Klux Klan. And the notebook also holds names of uh, local people. And this all turns to, threatens to turn the mountain town on its end. David Joy's titles are consistently acclaimed in the mystery space and those we thought we knew is bound to impress as well. Um, this is really great timing because uh, the filming for another one of his, uh, not the filming for the movie adaptation of another one of Joy's novels where All Light Tends to Go has just been completed that's starring Robin Robin Wright and Billy Bob Thornton and it is set to be released later this year so this one is going to be super exciting and then next up again taking it abroad to London we have The Secret Hours by Mick Heron this is a standalone spy thriller from Mick Heron who was a number one Sunday Times bestselling author of Slow Horses which has also recently been released as an Apple TV Plus show, which is getting great reviews. Um, in Secret Hours, we uh, follow a disastrous M15 mission in Cold War Berlin. So two years before the book, uh, a hostile prime minister launches the monochrome inquiry, investigating historical overreaching by the British Secret Service. Monochrome's mission was to ferret out any hint of misconduct by any M15 officer, officer and allowed Griselda Fleet and Malcolm Kyle, two civil servants seconded to the project, unfettered access to any and all confidential information in the secret archives in order to do so. But M15's formidable first desk did not become Britain's first, Britain's top spy by accident, and she has successfully thwarted at the inquiry at every turn. Now the administration that created Monochrome has been ousted, the investigation is a total bust, and Griselda and Malcolm are stuck watching as their career prospects are washed away by the pounding London rain. Until the eve of Monochrome shuttering, 
when an M15 case file appears without explanation. It is the buried history of a classified operation in 1994 Berlin, an operation that ended in tragedy and scandal, whose cover-up has rewritten 30 years of service history. The Secret Hour is honestly a perfect entry point into McCarran's larger body of work as it is a standalone novel. It is uh, poignant, unnerving at times, and in moments also laugh out loud funny. Paula Hawkins, author of Girl on the Train, a book that I loved, uh, said that, it said, I doubt I'll read a more enjoyable novel all year. Oh, very exciting. Um, so next up we have West Heart Kill, which is a novel by debut author Dan McDormand. Um, this is an irresistible literary murder mystery set at a remote hunting lodge where everyone is a suspect, including the erratic detective on scene. It's a remarkable debut that gleefully upends the rules of the genre and marks the arrival of a major new talent. So we're set at an isolated hunt club. There's a raging storm, three corpses discovered within four days, a cast of money, scheming, unfaithful characters. When private detective Adam McGannis joins an old college friend for the bicentennial weekend at the exclusive West Heart Club in upstate New York, he finds himself among a set of not entirely friendly strangers. Then, the body of one of the members is found at the lake's edge. Hours later, a major storm hits, and by the time power is restored on Sunday, two more people will be dead. The elements of the classic murder mystery are all present in West Hart Kill, but it's the daring structure and mischievously subversive narration that sets this debut apart. This is no ordinary whodunit. And, fun fact, the club in the novel is based off a similar club McDormand frequented as a guest, though the murders are all of his own making. Um, this is perfect for, fa for fans and readers of Magpie Murders, the Thursday Murder Club series, and the Knives Out movies. <laughs> okay, before I start speaking, I'm going to check again. Thanks to everyone for sticking with me. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. okay. now, now that joke would have worked. Librarians, can you hear me? <laughs> Barbara's haunting this webinar. Okay. <laughs> so next up, oh no, wait, I didn't do the mystery guest. Go back, go back. This is so exciting, you guys. Everyone was so excited when this was announced last week. It is the second made novel um, by Nita Prose. We are so excited um, to welcome back Molly, the unforgettable character from The Maid. And in this next installment in the series, when an acclaimed author dies at the Regency Grand Hotel, it's up to the fastidious maid to uncover the truth, no matter how dirty. And this can be considered a standalone novel, um, of course, featuring Molly Gray, who we already know and love. And um, and of course, you know, people can jump right into this one. But I have a feeling you should stock up on the maid because people are going to want to possibly start from the beginning. Because as we know, Molly Gray is not like anyone else. She has a flair for cleaning and proper etiquette. She's risen through the ranks of the glorious five star Regency Grand Hotel to become the esteemed head maid. And in this next book, just as her life reaches a pinnacle state of perfection, her world is turned upside down when this renowned mystery author drops dead on the hotel's tea room floor. Um, so Detective Stark, Molly's old foe, is back. He investigates the author's unexpected demise, and it becomes clear that this death was murder most foul. Um, we're so excited to, to have this on our list for fall. It will also be available in CD. Um, so happy audiobook month to you all there. And um, yeah, we're just so thrilled to return to return to this beloved character. Um, it's perfect for book clubs. Booklist said of the maid in a starred review that it was captivating, charming, and heartwarming with deft writing and a clever original plot. And it was an unusual crime novel that will read, reader, leave readers with a warm glow. So we expect nothing less from the mystery guest. Um, and of course, it was also um, the maid was a top library's pick in January 2022. So we look forward. I know this is going to be a question. We look forward to letting you know as soon as there is um, an early read available on this one. We're going to keep it a mystery for now in theme with our with our <laughs> category here, but we promise we won't hold out on you as soon as we know. Okay, so next up, fill in the blank in the Q&A. I love to blank while I listen to an audiobook, and I will go first. I'm a little embarrassed about this answer for some reason, but I love to do the dishes while I listen to an audiobook because I just feel like it, it really makes it so much more enjoyable and I can get through a lot and um, my house gets neater when I when I listen. So 
There we go. People are saying they like to cook. They like to walk outside. Oh, thank you, Lisa. You also like to do the dishes and fold laundry well. Oh, floating in the pool. See, that's if I had a pool, that's what I would do. Thank you. That's a great answer without kids. Important aside there. Do you guys want to share what your favorite thing to do is while listening? I think they touched on I fold laundry while I listen. Um, and then usually if I'm distracted, everything ends up in exactly the wrong pile and I have to do it all over again. So, but I can't bring myself to stop. <laughs> well, I know we're just about out of time. So I will quickly just move on to show you some very new and exciting audiobooks. In honor of Audiobook Month, we couldn't um, not show you that Dolly Parton has a new kids' book on audio that she reads. So in full honor of the rhinestones or the sequins or whatever you want to celebrate, be sure to get Dolly Parton's Billy the Kid Makes It Big on audio. Um, and also we have a wonderful um, uh, memoir by Luma Muffley, also read by the author called From Here. It's a coming of age memoir about a refugee advocate. She writes of her own journey to reconcile her identity as a gay Muslim woman and a proud Arab turned American refugee. Um, book list said, um, which is great for Pride Month as well. This story is a reminder that we have the right to live how we want and love who we want. And then I just also had to point out some of these other great things very quickly. Ethan Hawke reads the new Dave Eggers children's book on audio. Conversations on letting go, I've talked about before, but it came out yesterday. It's an audio original, a completely unique self-care title with so many wonderful guided meditations and guidance and lots of inspiring listening. And then Tom Hanks, of course, is part of his own recording for the making of another major motion picture masterpiece. He also includes his wife, Rita Wilson, and some other really recognizable voices on this. And then last but not least, CD drop in alert. Hello, beautiful and lessons in chemistry are coming to CD in August. August. So get your shelves ready, get that space ready. We know your patrons want it, and we're so happy that we can bring this to CD to meet the demand. So happy audiobook month to everyone. And finally, on that note, Sync is back. If you're not familiar, it's a great way for audiobooks for teens to get to, they're free um, for anybody really, but go to audiobooksync.com. You can see the next four titles available on the screen there. And it's just such a wonderful program to encourage listening. Um, of course, we encourage them to check books out from the library, but this is another great way that they can um, keep them as well. So thanks for sticking around everyone and dealing with our apocalyptic <laughs> technical difficulties today. I hope the air is clearer wherever you are, um, but happy summer, happy pride, happy audiobook month. We look forward to seeing you at ALA. And anything else anyone wants to add before we sign off? Oh, just thank you all for coming. Yeah. Thank you. I hope everyone puts on sequence today. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Bye. Bye, everyone.